so yeah so again another hiatus i'm back um sorry about that obviously the last couple i mean momentum has been quite low recently obviously so it's certain circumstances i can't control um so yeah trying to find momentum to try and really get this out it's been hard but i'm back I've got some motivation i'm back and obviously what a way to come back obviously i've got a monday night raw the go home show before wrestlemania so that should be good so i can't wait to see where that goes and i can't wait to show you guys what show i am going to produce so yeah let's get started let's go <laughs> Gentlemen, my name is Joe and welcome to episode 24 of my modern day WWE save on TW 2020. Yeah, sorry for the hiatus again. I know it's like we're near the end, we're near the end of WrestleMania. It's just last couple of weeks have been really strange, like mentally and just life. So finding time to do this has been hard, and but I'm, I'm determined to get this finished because obviously change the plans here. Obviously with this one, I was going to do this until the end of the year, but. I think um, situations at the moment, obviously momentum and all that. Uh, my plan is to obviously get this done to WrestleMania, so that'd be great. So I'm gonna have like a series between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. So Wrestle the road to WrestleMania, this is what the series is gonna. I'm gonna probably call it in the end. Um, might decide to do it afterwards. I don't know, but that's my plan to at least get to WrestleMania. Then I'll decide what to do next on this save, or maybe do another save. I don't know. But if you want to make sure you don't miss anything um, from this save, or maybe another save, I do. Please like and subscribe, please. Um, I know it hasn't, uh, um, I've got, was it, on 40, I think 39 at the moment, not exactly a great number, but it's a, it's a work in progress, I'm just working, you know, trying to get as many views as possible, uh, please like and please put a comment as well, let's see if I'm doing it better, obviously um, consistency is a thing I need to work on, so that'd be a thing I'm going to work on, so, um, but yeah, so obviously this episode we've got, it's, uh, it's Go Home Show for WrestleMania, a lot of stuff happening, we've obviously we've got, uh, was it Bobby Lashley versus AJ Styles with... Biggie as the special guest ref. Obviously, in the, in the recording, it's a secret. But obviously, if you're watching this, you probably know anyway. So, and obviously, got that. We've got two tri a tri a three ways between the um, uh, members of the Triple Threat Tag Team Match. Which you've got Randy Orton, Montez Ford, and um, Chad Gable going against each other. And then you've got R Matt Riddle, you've got Otis, and you've got Dawson going against each other as well. With a nice little stipulation as well. We've got, one, we've got a women's six-man tag. We've got a men's six-man tag. We've got a lot of big matches in the show. I cannot wait to show you. So enough of me rambling. Let's go and dive straight in. Um, and yeah, and we start off with the WWE champion in the ring. Unhappy and kind of demanding Big E to tell him who his opponent's going to be tonight. Because he can't be having any more surprises. And he got lucky last week. So let's go and start there. So yeah, so we start off the show, well we did start off the show, it was 61, nice one, uh, nice way to start the show, with obviously the, the WWE Champion in the ring for a, um, yeah, just to kind of uh, be annoyed, he's kind of annoyed that obviously he, what, he, what he agreed to two weeks ago, and he kind of demands Big E to come out and basically like, tell him who his opponent is tonight, he's not sitting there waiting to the, to, to the match, tell him who his opponent is tonight, you get out of here now, I want to know who I'm facing, get out of here. And obviously Biggie does oblige to this request. Comes out. Sits there goes, that's fair enough. Fair enough. I shouldn't have done. Last week, I just wanted to put you on your toes to show. To, show, to, to prove how good you are. Because you keep saying you're great. But this week, I'm going to tell you who your opponent is. But first, I'm going to add a little stipulation to it. I'm going to put, if you win, her business can be at ringside at West, I'll match at Westside. But if you lose, they I can't be here at ringside. You, they'll be banned for ringside. They get involved. You forfeit the title. And it's going to be you versus me one on one the way it should be. Bobby Lashley looks reluctant, but then Biggie kind of goats him into it again because he knows how it works. Kind of sitting on, well, unless you think he can't beat me, of course. I mean, I'm just little old Biggie. And obviously, Bobby Lashley doesn't take kindly to those words and says, you know what? You won. I agree to it. Now, now this works. Tell me who my opponent is. And then Biggie goes, okay, you've waited long enough. Your opponent is phenomenal. And AJ Styles comes out. AJ Styles, you know, shakes his hand at Big E and kind of like, so he goes, I, I, you know, kind of says, I, of course, when he, when Big E asked me to face Bobby Lashley tonight, I was going to take it. It's been a long time since I've faced the champion. It's a long time since I've been, you know, st you know, centre stage on this company. And that's going to change right now. So when I face you, Bobby, I'm going to beat you to prove that I am still one of the best wrestlers in this company. And then 
whoever wins between you two, I'm going to face whoever the WWE champion. And I'm going to win gold again. And obviously when he says that, Edge comes out, resents that, saying, well, you're acting like you're just going to beat me at WrestleMania. And also, if anyone deserves a championship gold at WrestleMania, it's the rated our superstar, Edge. And then he kind of um, negates that, kind of, they have a fair, like, a face-to-face, that kind of stuff. But then, obviously, MVP is in the ring. I didn't put him on this segment, but he's in the ring. And he kind of comes out and says, you know, I like, he likes the animosity, so he's going to try and use that for between Edge and AJ, so he's going to use that for his advantage. So he sets up an idea of it being a special guest referee. Could be Biggie, it could be Edge, but I think I like the idea that basically MVP's like doing it, everyone's like, are you mad? But he does it because he thinks if he's probably got a plan in that match between Biggie and Edge. And obviously Biggie accepts it. Edge is kind of like, yeah, I like this, because obviously he sees an opportunity to try and mess with the plans of AJ Styles, so he likes it. Again, Edge isn't a heel yet, but he's kind of slowly moving towards that, possibly. I'm not kind of disputing anything. So then after that, obviously then, obviously this accepted. Whole segment's out, so Bobby Lashley is going to face AJ Styles in the main event, but we'll find out next who is going to be the special guest referee. So that's, so obviously we'll find out, so obviously then we found out after that, 457, it was Big E, of course I was going to let Big E be the ref. Um, for a 57, uh, very good there, obviously um, for a 50 there by Edge and a 61 by Big E, obviously I liked the finish being that he kind of, um, was Edge went for a spear, a Big E got out of the way, he was able to hit the big, hit, big ending out of nowhere, one, two, three, he gets the win, and I like the idea that basically like, also that it was her business trying to get involved, trying to distract, trying to do everything they can to make sure Edge, Edge wins, because they think if Edge wins... They've got a better chance of winning the match than they normally would. But, um, yes, yeah, so obviously that match there. Obviously, uh, we'll find out more about it later on in the show. Obviously, after that, we had a a segment backstage with everyone that is kind of involved. As you can see here, a bit different. Obviously, we've got everyone involved in that triple threat eliminated tag team match that's going to be at WrestleMania for the World Tag Team Champions. Everyone is there from the RK Bros to the Alpha Academy to... The Street Profits. So, yeah, the whole segment, I like the idea that basically we go back and they're all kind of arguing who's the better wrestler, who's the better single star. Obviously, they know how good they are as a tag team, but I like the argument here. And um, I kind of like the idea that maybe, like, Randy Orton as a veteran, and obviously the confidence he has kind of comes out and goes, you know what, we need to set this tonight. Because obviously we know how good we are, all of our tag teams. But tonight, we need to figure out who is the best single star. And we've got to put some stipulation on it. Seems to be if this if this rule was anything, it's stipulations. So obviously, you put a stipulation of like, okay, we need we have a three way dance between six members. If we're going to put one for two matches of three ways between the teams here, and the winners. If 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 somehow both teams, um, both members of the team can get a win in the singles match, they would be the last person in the eliminator. They could give them a, a, an advantage going into the tag team match. Obviously, Randy's kind of like using his smarts because he, he, if he puts him in a single star, and he kind of trusts, do trust Matt Riddle at the moment. So, you know, it's one of those things. But uh, yes, and obviously, you'll accept. And obviously, the first match, obviously, uh, that's been advertised, it's, it's obviously what will be next. It's going to be Randy Orton. It's going to be Jack Gable. It's going to be Montez Ford in the first one. Then we're going to have Dawson. We're going to have Matt Riddle. And we're going to have Otis in the second one. So that'll be an interesting match. And uh, interesting to see what they do after that. But yeah, that's kind of a setup. I know it was very weird for Aaron Randy to do that. But I like the idea of doing that. So obviously then we go backstage again. Obviously we go and see Bianca Belair kind of um, going into confront Becky Lynch. She wants to face her tonight. She's fed up of uh, her getting away. And she wants to face her tonight. Obviously, and then, but but funny enough, in in the in the room, obviously, um, Becky Lynch has backup with obviously the person that took out took out um, obviously Bianca Belair last week for the money a couple of weeks ago for the, for that big paycheck. Obviously, it is Carmella and Selena Vega. Obviously, uh, this is kind of set up in a situation of like, yeah, she kind of walks in the room, Becky Lynch on her own, and all of a sudden. Them two kind of all like you know in the bathroom or something. They come out from the locker room and they like back her up. So it's a three and one. And then obviously, then obviously Liz Morgan, uh, Liz Morgan and Rhea Ripley come come there. Thing and we have like a face to face between these two teams. Uh, so yeah, so I like the idea. Basically, Becky Bianca wants her now, but Becky Lynch is um, she, uh, she's outnumbered. 
but she's like you know and she accepts this tag team match that we're gonna set up we set up six six woman tag it's gonna be great and um yeah so it sets up a kind of situation of just a simple segment to set up a tag team match pretty simple there so um but yeah so we've got one more backstage segment before we actually get back to a match obviously we hear from sunny deville obviously going after alexa bliss obviously she i think she eliminated last week in that battle royal to so a battle royal to find out who gets in the battle royal i know how it sounds but it's actually really cool uh, so yes obviously after the basically she says she's still using her power even if she's on probation to try and you know get what she wants and again 52 there very good there but the segment actually really impressed by that actually very impressed so yes yeah, so we have that and obviously she's like you're gonna face me tonight. i want your spot but i can't just take it from you i've got to face you alexa bliss is on this redemption arc and she's kind of sitting there going, you know what? Yeah, okay, sure. Because obviously she's up to the, she can see the, she, uh, she can see the kind of um, resolve in her, in Sunny Deville's eyes. And obviously, um, ex bit Bliss is kind of like trying. It's a gone on redemption arc, trying to help people when she can, and she's trying to prove herself. So any opportunity she can, she will take a match. So obviously um, that sets up a match that is going to be next. Sunny Deville, Alexa Bliss. And if Sonya Deville wins, she's back in the Battle Royal or the uh, or the uh, Women's Battle Royal at WrestleMania. Let's find out what happened there. Obviously, no surprise to anyone for a 38. It's actually better than they did. Also, a 40 there. 29 by um, Sonya Deville, no surprise there. But 38, it's actually done better than kind of just a little bit low, but it's actually really good when you think about it. But yeah, this one, simple one. I like the idea that obviously in this one, they put Sonya Deville... Sonny Deville walked into a sister Abigail for for Lex Bliss to get the win. I like the idea that she's she's she hits everything at Lex Bliss. She gets a lot. She gets frustrated with the ref, starts arguing with the ref, doesn't realise about Lex Bliss from behind, turns around. Sister Abigail, one, two, three, she gets the win. And um yeah, and obviously after that, obviously Lex Bliss is happy, she gets out of the win. Obviously, everyone's happy except for Sonny Deville. And obviously after that, she gets back she's frustration, she gets on the mic kind of other frustrations here obviously she's on the mic talking about for 35 just kind of talking about how she's like she's fed up with this she's fed up with this she should be in that battle royal she should be the top of this division and what's the point of having power if you can't wield it type thing but obviously uh, i did put her here but adam pierce comes out and this whole segment's kind of set up though she's been in performance review so adam pierce says i've just got off the phone with your, uh, was it? Let's say Mr. McMahon, because he still runs the company at this point. Uh, and this save anyway, in all real life, of course. Um, so, yes, obviously, then she says next, uh, he or whoever he sends will come down, and in that ring, he will tell, they will tell you how you, the results of your performance review next week. And obviously, so it's only if you kind of get so worried and kind of concerned, because now she's thinking, ah, crap, maybe I shouldn't have be, been doing a lot of things I've been doing the last couple of weeks. So she's probably why she's going to lose her job. So we'll find out about that next week. But yeah, so it's kind of set up. I like the idea of that. So obviously after that, we go back to Randy Orton backstage, obviously before the first triple threat match. And um, yeah, it's kind of um, it's kind of like the last couple of weeks. Obviously, he's uh, Randy Orton's kind of said, I made this match because I was confident in your abilities, Matt Riddle. Matt. Well, Matt, we know it's on a first-name basis. And he's like, we've had our differences last couple of weeks, but we, you need to be focused. We need to get that advantage. If you believe in anything, you believe that we that we are the best tag team on this roster. And we need to keep those titles. So can you just focus for once? Not, don't try to get disqualified. Don't do anything I would do. Just be the riddle that we know and love. And you will get your win tonight. I'll do my part. Just make sure you do yours. And I obviously, I say we get 52. Very good there. So obviously, the question is, can Randy get the win for his team or is there going to be a shock on the cards and obviously there was with Montes Ford getting a win for 49 actually quite surprised how low this was obviously Randy 61 um, when he got 35 34 by obviously Chad Gable and uh, Montes Ford you expect but really good stuff here obviously a very good match um, I put obviously for you I believe the best members of that team of each team we got Rand Randy obviously you could say Riddle but you know he is the veteran Montes Ford I have high rates for him. I think he has a great singles career when he decides to become a single star. And Chad Gable, we all know how much everyone loves Chad Gable. At least he's not called Shorty G anymore. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so it was a quick match here, 10 minutes. Good stuff here. I like the idea, basically, like, 
Randy Orton hits the RKO out of nowhere on, I think, Jared Gable. But then obviously just go for the pin and he get then, you know, uh, Montez Ford comes top, hits a frog splash on Randy. He gets out of the ring. He, that gets, puts him out of the ring. Montez Ford gets the pin. One, two, three. He gets a surprise win. Everyone's kind of shocked. So he it's one it's one nil to his team. So if Dawson can get a win these triple threat, they have the advantage going into the tag team title match at WrestleMania. So we'll find out about that stuff later. But obviously after that we hear from uh, kind of set up for obviously a match that not set up but kind of announced that we're gonna have six another six man tag. Uh, it's gonna be Dominic. Uh, it's gonna be Dominic Steele. It's gonna be Finn Balor. It's going to be Damian Priest again. Didn't realize this until I booked it. That this, basically that's the Judgment Day right now. <laughs> that's kind of funny in my books. I think that's cool. The same one got a, the same one got a fifty five. Obviously with and they're kind of talking smack at uh, kind of all talking about um, kind of set up with Kevin Steen uh, or Kevin Steen. No, Kevin Owens. It's what happens when you got the names. You don't have the things actually. What they're called they're actually names. But yes, obviously it sets up a kind of situation. Uh, and they're talking about the match tonight. Kind of like Finn Balor. And kind of talking about, yeah, tonight I'm on your side, Damien Priest. But that title is going to be mine at WrestleMania. You've got Dominic Steele kind of quietly contemplating um, what to do in the corner. It's basically like they're like Dom, uh, Damien Priest is there. Finn Balor is there. And you've got Dominic Steele there. He kind of contemplating. But he's looking at the title. They're working together tonight. But Dom, uh, Damien Priest should know that people, are, they're both they're both an opponent. They're, the gun, they're gunning for that title. So you better watch out. You trust him tonight, but he knows that he's got to be very careful because a lot of people were gunning for that title and maybe WrestleMania might lose it. But we'll find out then, but not tonight. So yes, that's obviously that's the, another like, backstage segment setting up for that tag team match later on. Obviously, after that, we hear from another person that is aggrieved from what's happened to him in the last couple of weeks. And that is Apollo Crews. Talking about, day, uh, was it Gareth Stevenson? That's, it's been a four on his side last couple of weeks. But 44, very good there. Talking about how tonight he's going to finally end the problem that is Gareth Stevenson. And then he's going to beat him tonight. Finally ending his great momentum. And then I'm going to go and win the Young Junior Giant Battle Royal. And I'm going to get that title shot. Because I have worked my butt off the last couple of years and I deserve it. I deserve it. And I'm royalty. Because so of course I deserve it. Everything should be handed to me. So, um, but tonight, Gareth Stevenson. Everyone should keep an eye because this is the last you're going to see of Gail Stevenson. So yes, obviously that see that match. So that match. So can Apollo Crews finally get a win or can Gail, St- Gail Stevenson get 2-0 two, two and oh on the Nigerian royalty? Let's find out. Obviously, and no surprise to no one if you know how things work. For 35, that's a really good. Gail Stevenson gets the win. For 34, like, they're really similar level as you think. Gail Stevenson getting a 30, 34 by, you know, um, Apollo Crews. I love that. Personally, because it's just, it means it's a work in progress. This momentum's worked really well since his debut. So, he's got he's been on the way, a good winning streak. So, I'm interested to see. Well, I'm interested to see. It. I've got I have big plans for him basically. Um, so obviously then obviously I like the idea. That, I don't know. I know what his finishers yet, but I like the idea that maybe he is like an angle slam, do like a Kurt angle homage type thing. Get that he gets an angle slam. And um, yeah, for 35, very good there. But obviously after that, obviously um, Apollo Crews gets a try to tackle from behind afterwards. Um, but obviously Gail yeah, Stevenson throws him out of the wing. He's frustrated. Gail Stevenson gets on the mic um, after a segment. But he, he gets a surprise. Just when he thinks he's got, he's taken away one problem, another problem arises. And that problem is the for- former world heavyweight champion, two-time world heavyweight champion in Dolph Ziggler, who, who basically... Comes from behind, boom, hits a super kick, boom, he hits that, takes him out, and basically, like, you think you've got problems, you haven't seen nothing yet. So I like the idea of basically Dolph Ziggler's, like, you can sit there and see why he's frustrated, he's not on the card, that he's had frustrations after a couple of weeks, with obviously with Edge and AJ, but he's fed up with someone, like, taking his spot, so he takes that guy Stevenson, and obviously they're both in the Battle Royal at WrestleMania, so there's now... Gareth Stevenson is starting to put up a lot of enemies. So I don't see his chances very well in that battle world. But obviously we find out at WrestleMania. So obviously after that we hear from Riddle. Talking about his match. Um, talking about uh, kind of the, confronting him. Kind of talking about how, you know, um, 
well, actually, when I actually before I say that, I remember I didn't put this in the segment, but there was a backstage interview with Riddle talking about how he wants to um, next match is going to prove why he's better than everybody in that ring, and he's going to get that. He's going to make sure that no one gets an advantage going into that tag team match at WrestleMania for the tag titles. But obviously, as you can see there, that was talk it wasn't true because guess who got the win? Dawson got the win. 4A, 42, very good there. Um, I, I just basically, I forgot that I didn't put the segment in. and um, But that's fine. So obviously after that, got the 42 there. Obviously the biggest performer is obviously Matt Riddle with the 41. 32, 33, one by obviously Dawson and the other one by Otis. But I like the idea that Riddle tries to go, uh, hits his brodemic or something like that. I like the idea that Dawson kind of uh, pulls him out of the ring. He takes, the, he pins Otis. He gets the win. Obviously, it's kind of a heel move, but you can see the kind of desperation of the match. I like the idea that basically, like the Street Profits get two for two. That means they've got the advantage. So they'll be the last team to turn up at the WrestleMania match in Triple Threat Eliminator. So it's going to be interesting. So sets up quite nicely. Obviously, after that, all the teams fight in the ring, um, as you can expect. Specs, all teams fighting in the ring. Uh, classic, classic brawl. And it all ends with, obviously, you've got the Alpha Academy standing tall. Uh, I like the idea, maybe like, so obviously you've got Alpha Academy attacking Street Prof uh, Dawson, and obviously everyone comes out. And then obviously it kind of ends with Ultras kind of coming in, and obviously Don like, attacking everyone. Kind of, he takes the advantage because of how big and strong he is. And then like, he's squash on, I say, Montes Ford. And then he hit, and then I don't actually know what Dawson's uh, um, Chad Gable's finisher is, but he hits his finisher, and obviously we stand tall. Um, but as I say, hold the titles high. So maybe that's what we might see. Things are not looking good for Arcade, but they've got, was it, Afcademy got momentum. Street Profits have got momentum after winning the two singles matches. So Arcade, Bow they're not looking good. Can, so they can, can they defend their tag team titles at WrestleMania? We'll find out soon enough. But that's for set up for that stuff. Obviously, we then we go backstage again with Bianca Belair, Liz Morgan, and we're Ripley talking about the tag team match and obviously warning Bianca Belair that it's not over just yet. That's a situation of yeah, she becomes champion. She's got to make. She's got to be careful because we're Ripley or Liz Morgan. She's going to be gunning for it. And also, whoever win and and they're both declaring they're going to win the bat the women's battle royal. And they're going to win it. And they're going to take the title. They're going to be the first opponents. So, again, the same thing with um, uh, Damien Priest and obviously in Balor and Dominic Mysterio. Well, your partner's tonight. But you've got to remember that we've all got aspirations as well. We'll take out Becky for you. We'll help you fight Becky and her goons. But, after that, we're, gunning for, we're all going for, gunning for the same thing. So, be careful. Watch your back. After the match. So obviously. And then that match. Is next. It was. Uh, obviously we've got. Becky Lynch. Carmella. And Selena Vega. Going against Bianca, Bianca, Bianca Belair. Liz Morgan. And Rhea Ripley. And the winners of that match. Were. Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair. Liz Morgan. And Rhea Ripley. Um, for a. 47. Very good there. It was only a six minute match. Didn't put too much on it. Uh, very good stuff. Obviously the high score was was uh, Becky with a 56. Obviously, we got a 32 by Zena Vega. We got a 29 by um, Carmella. Obviously, these are actually got the actual names. It's very hard. <laughs> so you got a 30. So you got a 31 by Kennedy Morgan. A okay, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, basically, Becky's the high score. Not surprised. Obviously, she's the most experienced wrestler there. But um, maybe have a situation. Obviously, Becky kind of. Um, like, Bianca Belair finally gets hands on her, and it kind of ends with basically, like, Bianca Belair hitting a KOD on Carmella. But she's looking at Becky, and it could have came for the save, but she's not, she doesn't want to have anything to do with Bianca Belair. And, um, but obviously that match ends, obviously Bianca Belair gets the pin and gets the win. But afterwards, we'll have a brawl. you got to have a brawl. has to be done. But obviously everyone's fighting, and obviously Be Bianca goes after Becky. Becky tries to jump over the barricade to get away, but obviously she grabs her hair, but then obviously Becky finds a way, like she, you know, slaps her in the face, and that's enough to distract her. Becky then gets away again, but that won't be the end of it because of WrestleMania. She finally gets her hands on her. So would that be? Will Becky Lynch? Is she scared of Bianca Belair? 
we'll find out at WrestleMania. But Bianca Belair's gunning for it's only maybe it's only a matter of time for she beats her and takes the title from her. We'll find out at WrestleMania. But yeah, simple simple stuff there. I like it. So obviously after that, we get two. After that, we get to the uh, opposite side of that triple threat. Um, in a sense, we get for sixty-two. We get Kevin Steen. We get Kevin Owens. We get Seth Rollins. We got the Miz. We again, they're kind of sitting there saying, "I'm gonna." It would like do all kind of leaders in the room, right? So I like the idea to base it all kind of like, no, well tonight this is what we're gonna do. And then Seth's gone like, Whoa, "Who put you in charge?" No, this is what we're gonna do. And then the Miz being trying to voice the reason, say, "We need to be on the same page." We've got, we, 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 we've all got an advantage. What we need to do is take these guys out tonight. Take them out, injure them. So when they come in, we have the advantage in that match of WrestleMania. It doesn't care who wins. We need to take these guys out. We need to focus. And then, kind of right. But then we have like a stair down between Kevin Owens and Steph Rollins kind of going. Like, there's two tension there. I know it's like the old really get along thing. And it's pretty lame, but I like it personally. So, But obviously, then. That sets up the match that is going to be next. We're gonna who's gonna win? And as you can see there, it is the team of Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, and the Miz get away in against the US champion in Damian Priest, Dominic Stewart, and Finn Balor. Um top the top rated is obviously fifty four, and that is Seth Rollins, no surprise there. But a lot of I think Dominic Stewart being forty, kind of hitting up with people like Finn Balor. And kind of Damien Priest kind of is very encouraging. I think he's really done well. I really tried to push him out quite well since that. Um, I like the idea that basically like, I think, was it Damien Priest kind of walks into a stunner or something like that. Or Dominic Mysterio or basically like, it all comes down to it like for a three on one. Obviously, and then KO was able to hit a stunner on Dominic Mysterio. And then he hits, a, and then he hits, and then Sephon hits a stomp. He gets the pin, gets the win. And um, yeah, maybe they have the advantage going into that ladder match. But obviously, after obviously after that, we have another brawl has to be done. Yeah, it's all the same. So that's for a forty-seven, a nice brawl to end the thing. And I like the idea that maybe Dominic Mysterio stands tall after all of it to kind of show that maybe this guy is not more than just his son. And I just do find it funny that not unintentionally, Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, and Finn Balor are all are kind of on the same page in a way. Like the idea that basically, universally, maybe I predicted Judgment Day. I'm just saying. <laughs> it was pretty obvious, but maybe I predicted it. But obviously then, so that sets up that other match that I have very high hopes for. I'm still not... It'd be interesting to see who... Uh, I've been, I, I still haven't... I'm still in the fence who I'm going to pick to win. There's good options there. That's why I like it. So I cannot wait to see what I decide myself and... How, what the score is because I've got a feeling that could be a way high rated match and hope it is because it's got a lot of Vega compared to that. It should be interesting. So, obviously, WrestleMania. So, obviously, after that, we hear from the Hurt Business backstage talking about AJ Edge and oh, it's, obviously, the next segment as well. Obviously, we've got Big e, Bobby Lashley kind of talking Hurt Business saying he needs to win this tonight. Um, Big E isn't, um, he's got all this advantage. And, he, and obviously, he knows he can beat him one on one, but he just, the, he's, he's seen this kind of momentum before. Normally, this kind of momentum gets someone to beat someone at Western Man and get the title. So he needs to win this tonight. So this guy, the guys are sitting there saying, okay, you need to be in there tonight. You need to help me out. You make sure win. You messed up earlier in the night, but tonight you've got to win. And then obviously Edge comes in saying, I appreciate what you tried to do last earlier in the night. I can't let AJ get any momentum against me. So I'm going to be at ringside. I'm going to help. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that he doesn't do anything that is on towards. I know Big E's the ref, but you can't trust Big E at the moment. So Edge, I'm going to be there to make sure everything, I'm going to be a special enforcer in a way, around, making sure everything goes according to plan, and make sure AD doesn't cheat or do anything shenanigans to get a win against you. All I say is you owe me one if I if I do help you tonight. So that sets up the main event. Obviously, it's going to be Bobby Lashley. AJ Styles with Big E as a special guest ref. What's going to happen? Obviously, as you can see, watching there, AJ gets the win Against the WWE champion, but what disappoints me is only got a 48. 50, a 59 by AJ, a 62 by Bobby Lashley, and you only get a 48. I don't know if it might be the length of the match. It's only 12 minutes, but apparently that was too long for the game. It's very strange how that didn't work out. But I don't know. I like the idea that basically it's shenanigans near the end. All the people get involved. But then Bobby Lashley is too distracted by what's going on. Turns around, AJ Styles hits a phenomenal forearm, then hits a Styles clash. One, two, three. He gets a big win. 
but obviously Biggie just um, uh, I'm not going to say it's a fast count but it's kind of implied that he, did, he really wanted Bobby Lashley to lose here so yeah and obviously that means that Bobby Lashley versus AJ I know you can say W champion losing the week before I know but it's not unprecedented and it is against AJ Styles so I don't think a lot of people would be too devastated that I did this uh, so that sets up a match that basically now we're going to have one on one. It's going to be single, no interference. It's going to be a simple match, not like last time. And that means Bobby Lashley versus Biggie, who's going to win? Kind of, that's got good potential. I hope it does well. We'll find out that at WrestleMania as well. So obviously after that, we end the show with a brawl between everyone. But I like the for forty fifty two. I like the idea that basically we have the, the more brawling, and then. We have the thing in the corner saying, the copyright thing saying that she's just signed at the end of the show. And it just fades. It fades. And it can't, we don't know. Like, no one's got an advantage. It just shows chaotic. Obviously, a lot of fighting, a lot of back, you know, in the ring fighting. It just shows the chaotic nature of this rest, this Royal Go Home show. And everyone wants to get momentum. Everyone wants to keep, get get the advantage going into the biggest show of shows. I like the idea that you pan out and you don't know what's going on. And obviously, it could be a thing up with they would be up by so many like so like sort of like third person like man what happened what happened on Raw that week it was just great like sort of like you missed out on something or something like that or you do that thing that could be like you on this TV show but then it's released like as exclusive footage online to show you know just to, you know it's, it's happened before and I think I like that off the air stuff like we the fans there know more than we do that yeah I like that kind of stuff so that's how I would end it and that ends the show and then obviously. As you can see on the bottom of the show, the show did get a 54. Um, I was bit, I was okay with it. I was happy with it. Um, I think uh, the main event, I think the game is a bit harsh. 48, we've got people getting 50, late 8, 58, 62s. Should be at least a 53 or 4 at least. Should have done better. But I think as a show, 54, it's good. I was hoping it would be great because to go home show the West Mania. So, I don't know. But it would be interesting to see what I can do there. Obviously, we've got SmackDown next, but for the Raw, I think it's a good show, but I know I can do better. But obviously, we'll find out. Obviously, let's see if it's good momentum going into WrestleMania and see if WrestleMania can be the best show we've got. For the Raw side, Raw side it's, all, it's all set. Got a lot of big matches. Can't wait to see what happens with those matches. But obviously, we've got one more side of the coin with SmackDown, and obviously, that'll be in the next episode. But 54, Raw, I'm, ha I'm happy with it, but I know I can do better. But 54, it's good, it's solid. And uh, if you want anything going to WrestleMania, you don't want a bad show. You just want a, a good show. And that's all we got here. So that's good stuff there. So, yeah. Bring on WrestleMania. On the raw side, at least, anyway. Bring on WrestleMania. So, yeah, 54. Again, um, I'm, I'm happy with that. It's a good show. I wish it could do better. I still think that main event was harsh by the game. Because I think that was the scores that we're getting. It should get at least better mid-50s. You know, it should be getting... If that got mid-50s, I think that show would get... A high 50 or maybe even dare get a 60 because a lot of stuff has gone well i think uh the stuff that like normally like you know get stevenson stuff maybe stuff like sonny deville and that um stuff against alexa bliss stuff would get like in the 30s range and it did and it got higher ranges from what they're producing that's good so i was happy with that sense but yeah maybe i was hoping it'd be like the old actually there were some range where it's like oh my god i mean that in segment i did i think would probably go down well in this audience because it's very new i mean i think smackdown obviously prior to recording this always did one with i think um karen cross doing a thing to drew and it kind of faded to this black and white and kind of thing and, and it kind of faded and that looked cool and it's kind of a like shock factor so hopefully i got that for by ending here but yeah i feel 54 i'm i'm happy but i know i can do better but hopefully um if i decide to do after my save after wrestlemania that's the plan obviously um I don't know. It depends on how this is perceived. And also, it depends. Um, momentum is everything. Um, obviously, it might be a good thing to maybe start another save. And maybe start doing saves that are more contained by a time frame. And less about just doing things continuously. Maybe do like a set time frame for these things. Um, this whole save has been a kind of work in progress anyway. So, I don't know yet. Obviously, if any changes, I would definitely do a video and let you know about it. But until, obviously, the one thing is guaranteed. We've got two more videos Coming up, we've got obviously SmackDown's Go Home Show. That'll be hopefully at some point next week as well. I hope this this one's going to be out, I'm hoping, next week. Um, so hopefully, whatever day, I'll post it on, on my, my Twitter at StuartIrvine91. So make sure you check that out to make sure you know exactly. Uh, my plan is to maybe hopefully get them out 
on the same week. So we can have Raw, SmackDown, and then the week after we can do our WrestleMania, and that'd be great. So that could be the big event. But that's the plan. Obviously, last couple of videos haven't gone according to the plan, but, you know, life got in the way and other things distracted. But anyway, hopefully, please like and subscribe if you want to keep this... Um, if you're intrigued by the saves I'm doing now or maybe in the future, please like and subscribe. And, um, yeah, join me on my next next edition on episode 25. Wow, I've done 25 of these bad boys. Episode 25 was SmackDown, where it's going to be interesting to see um, if there's going to be any conclusion or anything big happening with the Roman and Brock situation. Obviously, we now have a new number contender for the Intercontinental Championship, so that really be anything for all that. Will Cesar be happy with that? With, with, where he is and obviously we, we evolved anything obviously we've got the women's stuff we've got the women's smack uh, smackdown women's championship we've got the tag champs all kinds of awesome stuff so make sure you don't miss that hopefully that'll be out soon for the next episode so enjoy the rest of your enjoy the rest of your week i've been Stuart Vine, and yeah i'll be back for the next episode of this tw 2020 save so awesome stuff until then have an awesome week so bye everyone bye